nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. We are really delighted to be here and to not only see the schools, but also ask you a lot of questions about, you know, what the Finnish education system is like and how. If you spend three hours or so in a school, as we did this morning, you saw real relationships and real respect between administrators and teachers. You also see really small enough class sizes so that there's a real differentiated instruction. So all the things that we say are important in terms of instruction for kids, not simply having a teacher in a classroom, not simply having a smart board or books that wrap around services, starting with daycare facilities and early childhood. That preschool is really a child-centered facility. Yes. You see the attention paid to the experiential right. learning. Yes. And, yes. and that the buildings are retrofit for kids. Thanks to the OECD PISA data, it shows that Finland is performing better than the average, yeah? We have been passing everybody else. What did we do to make this possible? Our policy of teachers is, again, very different to, to many other countries. First of all, we insist that every teacher in Finnish school has to have master's degree. All the Finnish teachers have to be treated like professionals. When people ask me that, how do you know in Finland that your students are learning in a school? And I, I always say that, ask the teachers, they know. Just like you ask the medical doctor if he or she thinks that the patients are, are doing well. Working uh, as a teacher in Finland, it's, it's really uh, something nice. And uh, when we get uh, the appreciation uh, for our work, that's even better. Teachers are appreciated in this country. You feel it? Yeah, I, I do. Alexander? Yeah. I think it's a general atmosphere that teachers are valued and the profession is appreciated in all society. And we have a good education to become a teacher. Teachers' professionalism means something. You see it in the school, you see that it's real. But what the teachers also talked about was the pride that the community has in its teaching force. And you could see it in terms of the pride that the kids had in their teachers, as well as the confidence that the teachers had when you walked into their classrooms. So this is my main subject, psychology. We are trying this book in two, two different schools. Wow. This class and the school quite near Vasa. One teacher in particular was talking about a new textbook and had called the publishing company about it and they were changing it based upon what her suggestions were. So that just blew me away because here she was talking as if this happens every day. 20 lessons a week. 20 lessons Yes, a week. but they work another 20 right. preparing lessons and marking papers and so on. So it's, it, it's not only teaching hours. Right. They have other duties as well. The number of teaching hours, there's almost a 50% difference between the, the teachers in Finland and in the United States. What are they doing when your teachers are sweating in the classrooms? They're working on their curriculum development, they're working with parents or consulting students or so on. But if they don't have an own classroom, then they can also work in here and then they have some spaces. This is so different than this. in the United States where teachers actually have their own office space, they have their own lockers, they have computers here, they have phones here. There's a, way, there's a professionalism about this right. that you just never see in, um, for teachers in the United States. If you go to Finnish school and say that mathematics, reading and science are the most important subjects, they will kick you out. Because this is not the, the way we understand learning. You saw the integration in terms of content areas, whether it be cooking and art and music and industrial arts and calculus and literacy. And you saw the integration between technology, human interaction and textbooks. When we talk about how there's no one-size-fits-all, you saw that clearly in the schools that we saw today. This whole business of education is run by the educators. And that's why the communication and dialogue within this community is a very different. Really, really appreciate the time. Thank you. What is so obvious about the education system in this country is that people are engaged in problem-solving 
not in winning arguments. The notion that somebody is an obstacle is just irrelevant here. It's not even part of the conversation. The conversation is always about how can we all together help children. They assume that teachers should be the center of a child-centered education system, and they work to make sure that teachers have what they need to accomplish their task of educating a country.